just accept that because I do want to send this replay to the people who couldn't make it. And I, I will point out a couple of things that I think will really help your son. Um, so I am going to get this party started. And away we go. So yes, the topic for today is how to shop to drop pounds. And uh, there's some other goodies in here. It's not just shopping. So I would really recommend that you guys take notes because I think you're going to really get some gems here. And by the way, this isn't just fat loss. This also could be health and maintaining your goals. So if you are at a, at a body weight you like, uh, let's not have the weight come back on, right? And that's what we're going to talk about. So first, I always like to talk in stories to kind of kick things off. I don't know if anybody has the answer, but I'm going to open it up for you guys to share. You could drop it in the chat. You can unmute. Does anybody know why red cars get in more accidents than any other colored car? Does anybody want to chime in on that? You can drop it in the chat and I'll read it to the group or you can unmute if you want to verbally share but I'm interested to hear if anybody has any input. Why do red cars get more accidents than any other car? No guesses, okay. Well, I'll give you, oh, here we go, we got one. They grab more attention. Jamie, well done. A lot of people think the driver has a need for speed, that speed demons love red cars and they go out and buy red cars and they tear up the roads, but it's actually more eye-catching and people turn their wheels and crash into them. They are a magnet. They get crashed into. They don't crash into things. And so these are the things that, or this is the reason that that, that happens. How does this apply to you guys? There are moments, there are things that you guys look at that cause you to have an accident and stop you from getting to your goal, to your end destination. What are they? I will tell you right now. They're right here on the screen. It is fad diets. All right. There's the keto and the carnivore diet and a million others, intermittent fasting, there's going to be more in the next five years. They're going to keep thinking of new ones. The goal is to not jump on the train. Some, somebody will make a great case and say why it's the best thing since sliced bread. And I'm here to tell you, it's not going to be that magical, right? Comparing results. That's a red car. Look what she did. Look how many pounds she lost. How come I didn't lose the same? A, a distraction, a crash, our accident, way to happen. Program hopping. Hopping from one gym to the other, hopping from one diet to the other. Uh, now I'm going to walk. Now I'm going to run. Now I'm going to Zumba. Now I'm going to do Peloton. You know, if, if you like variety, I'm not going to knock that. But if you're doing it so quick that you're not allowing the results to come through, that is a distraction. Okay. Um, choosing to do more exercise and not putting any focus into nutrition. Hopefully today's topic is here to help you change that mindset. You can't outwork a bad diet. You guys have probably heard that. And you also probably heard that abs are made in the kitchen and muscles are made in the gym. So if you want to see the muscles that you develop in the gym, we need to shed the fat and that is in the kitchen. Okay. And then finally, there's lack of consistency. Okay. All these are distractions. The red cars driving by, they're grabbing your attention and they're making you crash and not allowing you to get to your end destination. And so I just don't want that. So for those that don't know me, I know some of the people on the call, um, I know what you're going through because I've been there. I was once 260 pounds and I got down to a lean, mean 210 and got visible abs. And I will tell you, I'm like a shining example. I lost half the weight through workouts and then I got stalled at about 30 pounds. And then I dialed in my nutrition. I lost another 30. And so I, I literally got 50, 50 results from each. And so I know the value of both. I've also been a coach for 20 years. I've helped lots of people to transform their body. So I didn't just do mine. I helped other people. And I know about the family struggle because I am a husband. I have two kids and then I have two dogs, uh, two beagles that want to be walked. They want my attention probably more so than my kids these days. So I know what it's like trying to balance all the stuff you got at home and then trying to take care of yourself too. All right. And so I know a lot of the people on here are moms. There's, I saw some, some gentlemen too. I'm sure that, you know, again, we got some dads, but 90% of our clients are women. And so why do I love helping moms? Well, this is my mom. And my mom for many years during the 80s and 90s got duped by all the weight loss fads that came around. Okay, whatever Oprah was saying, whatever Dr. Oz was saying, whatever Atkins said, whatever women's magazine said, and when I did, when I was a kid, I didn't know what was what, but when I became a coach and I learned about this stuff, my eyes were opened up to, holy cow, there's so much BS in the fat loss and health industry. And we often get taken advantage. She was out the door 
the minute that Dr. Oz said, go buy raspberry ketones. These are amazing for fat loss. She grabbed her purse and I heard the, the tire screeching and she's flying down to the vitamin shop. And that is a load of BS. And it's a shame and it's a scam. And people are out buying supplements and a bunch of, you know, quick weight loss things. And it's because I saw it happen to my mom. And now my heart is about helping all the moms of our country. Because here's how I see it. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that movie about the, the Trojan horse. To me, moms are the Trojan horse of the household. If we get mom healthy, she will move in and she will attack the rest of the family and get them healthy and fit. She will deploy what she knows and what she's learned about health and fitness and get everybody else in the household to change and create a ripple effect. And that's a good thing because now the spouse is getting healthy, the kids are getting healthy and that's what I call generational health. And that's what we want. And that's why, again, moms, you guys are so important. But dads, if you're listening, you are too. Here's my final thing. And then we'll get into the content. Uh, this is a scary stat, guys. We are on track to be 50% obese by the year 2030. These, these are real stats released by the CDC that if you are in one of these dark, dark uh, um, states here, you're going to be at 50% obese by 2030. And hey, you're not that far off. If you're in a dark red, you're 40 to 49%. So we have to change. Whatever we're doing is not working. We're marching closer and closer to obesity with all these healthy supplements, all these gyms, all these coaches. Why is this happening? That's what I want to tackle with you guys today. All right. And it happens. It starts first in the grocery store. So we're going to talk about weight loss made simple. So this is the truth, the cold, hard truth. Uh, it's nothing but the truth. And that is, this is the only way to lose fat. No ifs, ands, and buts, no matter what diet you look at, the only way your body can lose fat is to create a calorie deficit. That is what the science says. So when you hear this fancy trainer talk, that's the one that gives a calorie deficit. It simply means more calories are going out than calories that are coming in. So if somebody were to eat 2,000 calories and and then they went and burned 2,500 in a day, they will pull 500 from stored body fat. And that is how we lose fat, all right? There is, there's just no way to get around it. And all these fad diets, I'm going to point out to you guys, just basically how they dressed up calorie deficit. No matter how you look at it, we can only lose fat when we burn more calories than we consume, okay? So here are a bunch of famous diets that a lot of people have jumped on the train. Number one, intermittent fasting. Well, what you're doing is you're cutting out breakfast. Guess what? If you only eat lunch and dinner, you're just creating a calorie deficit. What if you get on the keto diet? You're cutting out carbs. So all there's left is fat and protein. So when you cut out a whole food group, guess what? You're going to naturally be in a calorie deficit. Now, let's say you get on the elimination diet. You cut out dairy and gluten and those types of things. Well, hey, that is cutting out processed foods. And for people who eat a lot of those, they're just going to be in a calorie deficit now. What about if you track your macros or track your calories? You're eating the proper portions, which is putting you into a calorie deficit. Vegans, we're going to cut out all the animal protein, all the animal products. Well, after you only eat vegetables and all the things that you can eat on a vegan diet, you're going to be in a calorie deficit. And then what about Weight Watchers? We're going to count our points. That's just their fancy way of saying we're going to count calories to make sure we're in a calorie deficit. So no matter what diet you get on, that's why I said, whether it's fad diet to today or fad diets tomorrow, the ones that work are putting you in a calorie deficit. The question is, which one can you stay with long term? Because people say, should I do intermittent fasting? And I say, sure. Can you stick with it long term? They're like, no, I'll just do it for 30 days for my diet okay, or for my vacation. Okay, you're going to gain it all back. Um, hey, Dustin, should I do the keto diet? Could you stick to that long term? Then you shouldn't do it. Like if you cannot stick with it, you should not start it. Is the mindset you want to have? Yvette, I see you got a question. Go for it. Um, I had a question about you know like carbs and you seeing that carb cut out. Now I know that we need we do need carbs and yes. not cutting them out complete. How do you determine what is a good carb? Like because I. For me, and and even with my son, we have a little bit of stomach sensitivity. So I'm just trying to do some gluten-free or, you know, like let's say pastas, you know, that are made out of chickpeas or edamame or things like that. I mean, are those good? I mean, 
Yeah. How do we incorporate, how do we figure out what works for us, what's going to be help, especially with, you know, some sensitivities in, you know, digestion, how do we, how do we figure out what is going to work for us? Yeah, the, the same answer as I was mentioning earlier is feeling. So when you eat those foods and you feel bad, um, that is your body sending you signals. And we need to always be paying attention to what our body tells us. So those um, those alternatives, the benefit to them is that, yes, you're getting less gluten and wheat in your diet when you do chickpeas, black bean, edamame, pasta. The other benefit is they tend to be high protein. And so they fill you up. And so the dangerous thing about pasta is when you only have it with cheese. And I'm going to get into this into a second, but every meal needs to be balanced. There needs to be a carb, a fat, and a protein. Traditionally, a lot of people do pasta with Parmesan. Well, we got our carb, we got our fat, but there's no protein on it. And then you could just wolf a bowl and then go get a second, maybe even get a third. And these are the things that we don't want to be doing. So I don't think that um, you know those are bad, and I don't think wheat and white are bad. Um, I actually don't consider any carbs, quote unquote, bad. It's more about how do they make you feel? And then let's make sure we have a balanced diet. So you could do the ones you're eating. You could have white and wheat, but if they're bothering you, then stay away. So that that's pretty much it. Um, so kind of just to cover this, and then we'll get to something that will really help you vet is this is the standard American diet. And the worst part is that acronym of that is SAD. This is a SAD diet, the standard American diet. So what do you see here? Lots of processed foods, right? Pizza, fries, uh, white bread. We're putting, you know, again, processed milk into our, into our creamer. We're drinking sodas. We got ice cream. This is like a pretty standard diet for a lot of people. And so the pounds are packing on. And so I want to show you guys how you can still enjoy foods like this. I don't want to say this is all got to go away, but the main culprit that's causing it is sugar and what it does to your blood sugar. Okay. So let's kind of look at this. This is a very common day in the life of an American adult. Maybe some of you guys have eaten like this in a day. So let's look at this. Maybe for breakfast, you do a bagel, you do some cereal, you do a muffin. Well, we're going to have 30 grams of sugar as we start our day. Then let's say you put a little bit of creamer, aka sugar, into your coffee. I know it says milk, uh, but there is sugar in there to make it sweet. Um, so that's sweet. Or let's say you're not a coffee person, you just do OJ. So that's going to be... 10 to 20 grams, we're starting the day at 40 to 50 grams. An adult is supposed to have 30 grams of sugar a day. We're starting the day above that at breakfast, right? 40 to 50. Lunch, if you have a sandwich with any type of condiments, condiments have sugar hidden in them. Ketchup, barbecue sauce, uh, salad dressings, a lot of them have sugar. So I, I went low and I said, you added 10 grams of sugar into your sandwich or burger with condiments. But after sugar or after uh, lunch, we want to have a little sugary snack. We're going to have some candy. Maybe we'll go to the vending machine, get chips. Maybe we'll have yogurt. And so that adds another 20. Now, let's say dinner, you had a really healthy, rounded dinner. There was zero sugar in it. It was just a protein, some sort of starch and a veggie. But then after dinner, you wanted a treat. So you had a little bit of ice cream or a cookie. Nothing too bad. 25 grams of sugar. Well, hey. If breakfast was 40 to 50, we had 20 to 30 at lunch, and then you had a 25 dessert, you had 105 grams of sugar at the end of the day. And remember I said an adult is shooting for 30 grams in a day. So you do this day in and day out, and that is not hard to do, by the way. It is very easy to hit 100 grams of sugar. Here's the sad part, guys. The kids are going through this too. They start their day with cereal and milk, 30 grams of sugar. Peanut butter and jelly, jelly is sugar with a juice box. You gave them 20 grams of sugar. Then we pack a fruit snack, gushers, fruit roll up, another 20 grams of sugar. Mac and cheese has got 10 grams of sugar. Go check the box. You could see for yourself. Ice cream and cookies are 25 grams of sugar. After they finish their dinner, they too can have 105 grams of sugar. And so we as adults are packing pounds on ourselves, but we're also packing them on our kids at the same rate. See the math here. I put 105 for the adult and 105 for a kid. Now, a lot of times they might not pack on weight as pack as quick as an adult because they're moving and their hormones are really high. So they're fighting the fat loss better, but it will catch up when we get 20 and 30 and our metabolism is not working at that speed. And also we start to lose muscle. So not here to give anybody a guilt trip. Trust me, there's days that I've given my kids way too much sugar, but it's about awareness saying, okay, check. 
that day was a little bit over the top. We're going to balance it out tomorrow. We're going to get back on track. So here's what happens in your body when it comes to blood sugar. And I promise this will tie into shopping, but I'm giving you a baseline understanding. Okay. Blood sugar. All right. Um, two hormones you want to know. Number one, insulin. If it spikes, it does store fat. Then there's this thing called glucagon. It sounds like a transformer. It burns fat. So they are opposite uh, and they're working against each other. Here's what happens when you eat carbs. Okay. Let's go through the circle step by step. Number one, you uh, eat some carbs, okay? This blue arrow, now your body increases blood sugar because it needs to you know, create insulin. So in insulin is released and it's gonna take some of that food and put it into your blood supply as glucose. And then it's gonna take the excess it doesn't need and it's gonna put it into body fat. And now you have stored body fat. What happens then is you kind of go on this roller coaster. Now your blood sugar goes low and then you have low energy, you have mood swings, and then you, you crave carbohydrates. So you go and you eat more. And then the circle repeats itself over and over again. So we don't want to go on this roller coaster. We want to get off this roller coaster and we want to have stable blood sugar. Okay. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Number one, watch out where you get your advice from. Okay. Here was a meme that got me mad because it was called nine foods that make you fat and an apple was on here and donuts and then a salad and avocado and i get where they're coming from because some salads could be a thousand calories but you're just scaring people away from salad like let's not do that right when they put avocado yes it's high in fat if you were to eat a full avocado nobody does that maybe if you may turn into guacamole and you're dipping lots of chips but you're scaring people away from healthy food i do not think that's a good way to lead people so fruit doesn't make you fat. Here's why. Fruit has fiber, okay? Fruit slows down the blood sugar. Remember I said in the previous slide, when our blood sugar gets released quickly, it spikes up, we get the yawns, we start getting tired and it crashes down. And then now we go get more sugar, more caffeine and we ride it back up. Well, that doesn't happen with fruit because it releases slowly into your body because of fiber. So that's why you can't go nuts. So you can't overeat apples. You can't overeat bananas and say, oh my God, I, that was a really a crazy time at the movie theater. I can't believe I ate three bananas during that movie. No one does that, right? You eat one apple, you eat one banana and you're full, you're satisfied. And it's because there's fiber in it, okay? What doesn't have fiber is the stuff that spikes your blood sugar, ice cream, candy, donuts, cookies. There's no fiber in there. There's no protein. So those create a giant spike and a giant crash. Fiber creates a minor, minor up and then a minor down. And so you'd, you'd feel steady with your blood sugar, right? So that's kind of what I'm trying to get a, a, across here is we don't want to have those high uh, you know, blood sugar spikes. Here's what we want. We want a balanced plate. Every single meal, you, you should always have these filters on. You, I will not eat something that is carbs only. I will not eat something that's fat only. I need all three food groups. I need protein, carbs, and fat. So one time a client sent me a photo, said, coach, what do you think of this? It was oatmeal and banana. And I said, where's the protein? Where's the fat? Those are both carbs. We need all three. And so the next day she said, okay, I, I put peanut butter on the banana and I got the oatmeal. I said, we still need protein. There's no protein. Bana pe peanut butter is mainly fat. There's not a lot of protein in it. So she's like, okay, hard boiled egg. I'm like, that is a balanced plate. So we need to have all three at every meal to balance our blood sugar. If you only have one, you have a blood sugar spike, all right? And so you don't want a carb only meal and you don't want a carb dominant meal. So that does apply to the meals and the snacks throughout your day. Yvette, you got a question, go for it. I had a question about breakfast. I know um, my son's dad and we were discussing, you know, what was on the, I guess there's a handout that I haven't really had a chance to look through. Um, and it talked about how to eat for, you know, depending on what your weight is. Yeah. Um, what we what we usually eat for breakfast is like egg white with um, spinach and cheese and then like half of a half a cup of oatmeal with a little scoop of peanut butter. Is that too much? No, that's perfect. That's a perfect well-balanced meal. You got the protein in the eggs. You got carbs in the vegetables. And then uh, you got a little bit of fat with the peanut butter. So that's excellent. Yeah. And then for like lunch, like, uh, you know, we usually have these like little uh, rolls. They're like turkey. They have like red pepper and like some 
um, lettuce in it. And then yeah. I, I'll give him like some fruit and um, like cucumbers, sliced cucumbers. Is that okay? I don't know if that's enough or too not enough. No, you know? that, that meal, like it probably sounds like it's a little too light. So it'd definitely be like really pack in the turkey or, um, you know, find if there's anything else he wants to eat. Because cucumbers basically zero. There's no calories in cucumber, yeah. red peppers, all vegetables basically consider them zero calories. There's nothing in vegetables. So that's why it's something. unlimited. But, um, okay. but yeah, load up the turkey and see if we can put some fruit in there. Um, Cause again, he is a growing boy. So we want to yeah. keep him well fed. <laughs> right, right. Um, all right. Well, I'm going to move on to environmental factors and then we'll get into the shopping tips. So first, guys, I want to share this, this mindset with you. We all know what a thermostat does, right? When the room gets hot, it cools it down. And when the room gets cool, it heats it up. That is, uh, you know, how a thermostat works in your environment in your home. Well, there's things in your environment that can also heat up and work you towards your goal. They can, they can, you know, motivate you. And then there's things that can drag you down. They can cool you down and not get you to your goals. One of the most powerful forces in the world is you, that you will always want to match the expectations of the people around you. So if your mom, if your dad, if your co-workers if your kids all expect you to be a certain way that is your thermostat and so when you try to start getting healthy and fit they're like what are you doing you're changing and they might cool and try to bring you back right and so these are things that are going on around you and that's why it's so important you have a community you have other healthy friends because they are going to be the motivators that will heat you up they'll say you want to go for a walk you want to go eat something healthy we should go to the gym and hit a session these are the things you want in your environment to support you so before we get into the shopping tips, I wanted to point out three main areas, three main environments that we all are in each day and how you can basically improve them and upgrade them to serve you to make health and fitness easier. Number one, what's within arm's reach? All right, I'm here at my office desk. What's within arm's reach? Uh, if I don't want a candy dish because I will destroy that. So if you have an office desk, what do you got? Do you got snacks? Do you got you know your water bottle? Do you got a candy dish? You don't want food that is not supportive of your goals within arm's reach because the minute you hit stress, you reach for it. So think about that. Set up your workspace so you don't have those things, okay? Um, do your Does your workspace make it easier to get to your goals or make it harder, all right? Maybe you guys go into an office and they'll say, hey, I brought donuts for everybody. Or, hey, I'm going to make a run to Taco Bell. Anybody want something like whatever somebody is doing, these are all environmental factors, coworkers, and them offering stuff or bringing us stuff. That's a way people show love is with food. Well, the food choices can support my goals or can make me take away from my goals because they're packed with calories. So you want to be the person that speaks up, all right? One of the biggest things that holds people back from hitting their fitness goals is just simply lack of communication. They never tell their worker, the coworkers that they're trying to get healthy and fit. They don't tell the coworkers please don't bring me donuts. I'm going to be denying them every time because I'm on a health journey. They don't tell the spouse. They don't tell everybody on social media. You want to communicate this and put it out there to say, I'm sticking a flag in my health and fitness, guys. Here's how you can support me and bringing me temptation is not that. Who wants to walk with me on my walk, my, my break? Hey, boss, you'd be cool if I bring a standing desk. I want to stand a little bit more. You have to be the leader. You got to lead from the front. You got to take control. Do not wait for other people to support you because you're going to be waiting a long time. All right. You got to go make it yourself. So that's the first place is awareness at work. Second is awareness at home. Do you know that 70% of our diet is what is at eye level? You tend to eat the same foods over and over again in your pantry that are at the eye level shelf and you eat the most foods that are eye level in your fridge. And then those get you know eaten up and then you replenish them. What are the things we tend to throw out? Oh, the stuff in the bottom drawers. I forget it's there. Uh, the stuff in the top drawer. I can't get up and reach, right? And so you want to set this up as an environmental win by putting healthy foods at eye level, okay? Um, and here's a fun fact when we get to the shopping is that the biggest and you know most wealthiest food companies, they own the, high, the eye level uh, space at the grocery store. So you're going to see Post and Campbell's and all the big, big boys are going to be all on these mid-level. And then what are the, the little mom and pop brands that not a lot of people know? They're high up at the top or they're low at the bottom. 
And so that is prime telling you that biggest brands, why do they want to be on eye level? Because people grab and buy things at eye level and then they go home and they eat things at eye level. If they go home and put it at their eye level fridge and pantry. So again, back to that communication. How about at home? Are we communicating to the spouse? Hey, honey, this is how you can support me. Don't bring me pizza on Friday night. Don't, you know, buy, buy me the double extra large popcorn. We go to the movies. Here's how you can support me. Can you go with me to the gym? Can we go on a walk after dinner? Can I cook healthy food? And you're going to eat healthy food too. So I don't feel weird making two different dishes, right? We got to have that tough talk because it's only easy, going to be easier if everyone's on board. It is far harder if you have to be an island at home and everybody else is eating a bunch of junk. You're going to have temptation all around you. You got to say, nope. You know, again, back to that Trojan horse. I'm here. I'm here to make a change for our family. It's not for me. I want to raise kids without the habits. I want my spouse to live a long time. I don't want to outlive them by 20, 40 years because I chose to get healthy and he didn't. We're doing this as a family. Everyone's all in, right? It's a family unit. And, you know, the, the, um, the final one is awareness on your phone, all right? And so this might be kind of a, a weird one, but guys, the, the huge thing that a lot of people spend a lot of time on these days is social media. They say the average person checks their phone 182 times a day. So if you are walking around at work and you're walking around at home and then your eyes are on your social media, those are the three most prominent environments in your day. So my question to you is, what have you built for yourself on social media? Because guess what? You have full control. If you don't like someone on there, you can mute them. You can block them. You can unfollow them. You have full control over your feed. If they show you an ad you don't like, you can say, don't show me this ad anymore. You know, pop it, a company pops up, say, I don't want to see this company anymore. You have complete control. So what are some things that happen on social media when it comes to health and fitness? Number one, mindless eating. Looking at your phone while you're eating. It's really easy to overeat calories when you are distracted rather than paying attention to your hunger cues and your fullness and being present while you eat, okay? The second is you could just be triggered to eat. All I see on social media, if I happen to you know, see a, a restaurant ad is these big ridiculous desserts. They're doing 360 degrees and there's like ice cream spilling over the top and straws made of chocolate. And it's just like calorie sin heaven. And so that triggers me to say, man, something sweet sounds good right now, but it's because my eyes are on my social media and I'm allowing that on my social media. Who do you follow? Do you follow a lot of fitness people? Well, I would ask you this. They usually only make you feel one or two ways. They either make you feel inspired. You're like, oh my God, I want to look like them one day. Or, you know, go them. They're awesome. Or they make you feel like crap. And you say, man, I, you know, I don't look that way. I feel like trash when I see these people on my social media unfollow them block them if they do not add value to your life they got to go i say comparison is the thief of joy and you find yourself comparing you have to defend yourself right um and and here's the truth we have no idea how much effort maybe they're like living in a gym because they're a fitness influencer maybe they're literally in the gym six hours you don't know how much work they're putting into that we don't want to judge but we could choose that if it's not making me feel good to reduce my exposure to it all right so that is your environmental, um, you know, things to be aware of is your home, your work and your social media. All right. So we're going to get to the nutrition component and reading of labels. So first, nobody is usually taught how to do this. So I'm going to start with the basics, how to read a nutrition label. OK, so first thing is don't get caught up with them showing you how low the calories are. In fact, fit, uh, food marketers have gotten very smart to put a number at 120 or below they don't usually want something that says 200 300 500 calories because they know it'll freak people out and put it away what most people don't pay attention to is what is a serving size nobody eats just five ritz crackers right you eat a sleeve you eat half a sleeve nobody eats five crackers so to make yourself feel good oh, it's only 80 calories five crackers times 24 all right let's just round up to 100 this box is 2400 calories for the box that is a day's worth of food is in this snack, okay? 4.5 grams of fat, 4.5 grams of fat, uh, 10 grams of carbs. There's one gram of sugar. Yes, Ritz crackers have sugar. And then less than one gram of protein. Is this food going to support your goals? No, this is not gonna help you reach them. Here's the next part, ingredients. Most people will just read the macros and the calories, but I really encourage you to even dive into the ingredients, okay? Here's Here's a fun fact if you guys don't know this. The first ingredient 
is the most prominent ingredient in the food. And so if you see where the first ingredient is sugar, you should run. That is, it's, that's probably what you're going to see if you go look at, you know, like gushers, like it's going to say first ingredient, sugar, you know, fruit snacks. Um, the last ingredient is the least prominent, right? So, um, so this has unbleached, enriched flour. Why is my flour being bleached and unbleached? Why is it being stripped down? No nutrients that it has to then be enriched. So it's basically highly processed and it's not good. Um, there's high fructose corn syrup, which will spike your sugar. Uh, it is a simple sugar, your blood sugar. Um, and here's something also most people don't know is that sugar is a carb. Uh, it is a subcategory of carbs. So that's why you see here, total carbohydrates 10. And then it says total sugar as an indent one. Um, so no fiber, less than one gram of protein, highly processed, high fructose corn syrup, 10 grams of carbs. This is not a good product to put in your food. And I say product, I don't consider it a food because it was man-made. There is no rich cracker tree. There's no rich cracker bush. It was made by a man in a factory. And so we want to eat stuff that we would see in nature, not stuff that somebody had to come up with in a factory, okay? The next one I'm gonna point out here, uh, the, the ingredients um, is roasted peanuts. So it is peanut butter. Sugar is ingredient number two, hydrogenated vegetable oil and salt. Peanut butter does not need all this stuff. Why do they put it in? Because they're worried about taste. They're not worried about you being healthy. They know if it tastes good, the number one thing that people buy products on is taste. So if it tastes good, you will be a return customer. So there's three grams of sugar in this peanut butter, 16 grams of fat, seven grams of protein. That's why I said, I don't consider this a protein source. And look at, they are smart marketers. They're trying to get you to see that man, all the benefits. Well, it does got seven grams of protein. It is gluten-free. Peanut butter never had gluten, right? It's like saying, you know, uh, any food that never had gluten is gluten-free. You could claim that on anything. It's crazy. You could say broccoli is gluten-free. It never had any gluten products, right? Real roasted peanuts. I hope sure. I hope it is. What are not real roasted peanuts, right? So they're trying to label it to make it come across as healthy when really all this stuff is BS. So this is Skippy peanut butter. I say stay away. All right. I know that is a popular brand. I know a lot of people grew up on it. But when it has sugar in inside of it, it is no longer peanut butter. It is sugary butter. And so uh, you just want peanuts on the ingredient list, literally peanuts and salt, and that's it. Um, so go look at the ingredients and that's what you're looking for. Yvette, question. I had a question about the peanut butters and uh, like the ones that come with the oil, like Laura Scudders, I think it is, and stuff like that. Are those usually more are healthier or yeah they're gonna be just like less ingredients which is what we want i have still seen it where the oil is separated at the top and then sugars and ingredients so i wouldn't say blanket statement they're all good um you want to be a food detective because what i'm teaching now will be different in five years it'll be different in 10 years so what will be tried and true is looking at ingredients always and you know just becoming aware of what those ingredients actually mean and less ingredients is better. Um, so yeah, I would say still watch out. All right, here's some more things to look out for. Red flags, I call them. Basically, anything that they have to sell you on. You, you don't need to be sold that a healthy food is a healthy food. Does anybody need to be convinced bananas are healthy? Does anybody need to be convinced that cauliflower is healthy? We, we know these things intrinsically. It makes sense. But if I have to make a case, like a lawyer said, no, 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 you need to buy this. It's fat free. It's sugar free. It's gluten free. It's high in protein. It's whole grain. It's a good source of vitamin A. It's fortified. If I have to say these things to you, that means I need to convince you, which means it's probably not healthy because we know what is healthy and what, what isn't just by our, 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 you know, knowledge of, we don't even need a deep understanding, a basic knowledge of food and you know, what's healthy. Um, so you don't see chicken with a high protein label on it. Because guess what? The chicken companies know, you know, there's plenty of protein in it. Guess where they put high protein? On a granola bar, something that's all carbs because they're trying to get you to buy their granola bar. So if they're ever making a case on the labeling, that is a huge red flag. Patricia asks, would almond butter be better than peanut butter? Yes, but not always. I was just at the store actually, and I saw an almond butter that had 
uh, white macadamia flavor and, you know, peanut butter and jelly flavor. And like, it was just like all kind of flavored peanut butters. And guess what? All that flavoring included eight grams of sugar. So um, again, there's always a company that is worried about making it taste good, um, not worried about your waistline, they're worried about their bottom line. All right. Um, so essentially, we want to be food detectives always don't uh, assume anything is healthier until you read over it. Um, so here are some examples. Okay, guess what on red vines, they put always fat free. Well, there never was fat in red vines. It's all sugar, but that's their way of labeling it to make it sound healthy. How about skim milk? Uh, it says fat free. Well, when it comes to milk, you're balancing two different scales. If I increase the fat, I'm going to lower the sugar. And if I lower the fat, make it fat free, I'm going to increase the sugar because I got to make it taste good. The things that make things taste good to us is fat, sugar, and salt. So if I had a non-fat and non-sugar milk, that's called water. <laughs> it's going to taste like trash. So they have to put something in it to make it taste good. So you might think, oh, I'm doing a good job. I'm keeping it fat-free milk. But I guarantee you read the sugar content and you're feeding your family a lot of sugar. And then you say, okay, I'm gonna go full fat. It's gonna be lower sugar. So it doesn't matter to me which one you go with. I'm just educating you that what you're putting in your body and your family's body so you can make the best decision, okay? Cheerios, we all know that for years, they said low cholesterol can help you have a healthy heart, all right? I would ask you this. What is the main nutrient? Like, you know, bananas have potassium and you know that you get, um, you know, vitamin C from oranges. What is the exact ingredient you get in a Cheerio? Like, what is the real vitamin, mineral, nutrient you get from that cereal? And most people are stumped. They're like, huh, I don't know. And I'm like, they just did a really good job in marketing. That means um, we know that, you know, milk has vitamin D, like all the natural foods, you know, what's in it already. You don't need an education. You don't need to go through a, a, a crash course, but the non-healthy foods that are all packaged in boxes and bags and cans, you almost need to go to school to learn what's in it. Exactly. Yvette asks, what about alternative fo forms of milk? Yes, I would recommend that almond oat. And here's the thing. Milk is totally fine. I'm not here to bash milk. Um, but for people who get upset stomach, it tears them up. They don't feel so good. They should go dairy alternative. Um, the other benefit is it is lower calorie. A, a cup of almond milk is 40 calories while a cup of milk is 120. Well, that's triple. So if you're trying to watch your calories and maybe dairy doesn't make you feel good, you should absolutely go that route. Uh, Dustin, would you yes. recommend actually whole milk over uh, skim milk, assuming that you're not drinking too much? Yes, great question. Honestly, they're all totally fine. Whole skim, um, reduced fat, it really comes down to how it makes you feel. So do you feel okay when you drink whole milk? Yes. Okay, then I would say continue on. And, and do you need to lose weight? I guess is my next question. Uh, fat. <laughs> okay. Then. A little bit of fat around the belly, yeah. Okay. So uh, again, it's all about being a calorie deficit. So we kind of look at calories as like your daily allowance. So if you wake up and you're allowed 2000 calories, it's like your, your bank account's $2,000. And every time you buy you eat, you're spending money and you're, you know, you're spending those dollars, your $2,000, you could put it towards whatever you want. So if you want to put some of it towards milk, go for it, but know that every serving I'm giving them $120, where if I have almond milk, I'm only giving them $40. So um, if you want to lose fat, you want to be mindful of your calories. And that might be the only reason to go with an alternative. But if you're like, no, I love my milk. You know, it really makes me, brings me joy. Keep it, but you got to cut from something else. Maybe your breakfast, right. you got to have a little less calories, your dinner. So that that's for you to decide. But it's not like there isn't one is better than the other. It's just the calorie equation. So, okay. Yeah. Thank um, you. Yes. Allison, what about Greek yogurt that is high protein? That's amazing. I, I love Greek yogurt. Um, and, and that's why, because it's high in protein. But again, be your food detective. Um, go and look at the nutrition and make sure it's low in sugar. Um, again, if it's high sugar and high protein, you're kind of, you know, uh, getting a, a double attack there. And it's probably gonna be really high in calories. I personally like Oikos. Oikos, I think is like one to three sugar, and it's 15 to 20 grams of protein. So it's like, that's a good ratio for uh, a Greek yogurt. Yeah, that's my favorite too. Boom, love it. All right, so um, big takeaway here, guys, is just 
watch out on your labels. If it says sugar-free, low fat, you know, gluten-free, sugar-free, those are all sometimes not a good sign. Um, and then even hundred percent natural, I was really surprised to learn this. That doesn't mean anything. They can actually put hundred percent natural on anything. It, it does not, there is no, like there is no measurement you must meet to put that. You could put it on a Skittle if it's, if, if you could believe it. Um, things like organic, non-GMO, there is rigorous testing to earn that, to put that on your food, but natural, everybody can, you can, you can make your own homemade ketchup, put hundred percent natural on it and you will not get in legal trouble. So again, that's why I wanted to share this stuff with you because there's a lot of, you know, trickiness out there. All right. Next thing I want you guys to be aware of the many names of sugar. All right. Um, there is a lot of names of sugar. And so companies are smart and they try to use a different name to throw you off. So they know you're looking for sugar. So if you saw cane sugar, that stands out like a sore thumb, right? But uh, what if it said fructose? Would you know to get, you know, put it back on the shelf? What about corn syrup? What about dextrose? What about lactose? Um, high fructose corn syrup, right? Molasses, uh, you know, like rice syrup. Does that immediately stand out as a sugar? These are 43 different versions of sugar um, that they put into food and they try to change it so that you don't get your, your flag going and go put it away. But guess where this shows up, guys? In processed foods. That's what I, I hope the big takeaway you're seeing a lot of all this educating. I'm trying to help you learn how to navigate and dance around processed foods. But if you just don't buy a lot of them, you don't even got to exhaust yourself with all this. And that's things in boxes and cans and bags. They're trying to play chess with you. But when you're over in the produce, there's no chess. I'm just grabbing strawberries and I'm grabbing celery. And it's like, it's way less exhausting. It's when you go in the middle aisles, it's like you're in enemy territory. You're in a minefield of food marketers trying to trick you to get you to buy their food, right? So now we're going to get to that, the shopping tips. So the best thing, this was a perfect segue. The first tip I want to share with you guys, these are probably good things to write down, is I know we've all heard to shop around the perimeter. Why? Because the best foods for your body are around the perimeter, okay? So I say this funny little phrase, bags over barcodes, okay? Because a barcode is boxes that they could quickly scan. And here's the downside to that. A bag, in my opinion, is the sign of ultimate transparency. If I have a clear bag and I could see the potato and I could see the strawberry, they're not hiding nothing from me. But I don't know what's in the box till I get hope open and I rip it up. And so they are hiding the food. I don't know what it looks like. Guess what? I got a shop by the food picture they put on the front. I got to trust it looks like that when I get home. And so bags over barcodes, what are you going to get in a bag? You're going to get your fruit. You're going to get your vegetables. You're going to get your protein. Guess what? Your protein's in a clear plastic seal on that little tray, right? I could see the chicken I'm going to buy. I could see the steak. There's transparency. Eggs. I could go open the cart and I could look at it. When you have eyes on your food, that is a good thing. When they have to hide it in a box and put a picture and say, we promise it looks like this, I don't always think that's a good thing. So that's why the perimeter is your friend. Um, and you can get your dairy, whether you get eggs and you do get you know milk or anything else, you can get your non-dairy drinks, you can get your proteins, you can get your fruit and veggies, you can walk out the door. That's everything you really need. You don't need anything in the middle aisle. Trust me, there are things that are fun to buy, that taste good, we like to have them but you don't really need any of them. That's where uh, I want to point to, okay? Um, second is to be a food detective. Hopefully this is a uh, thing that you guys are hearing. I put a graphic here on the right of a very common fake healthy foods, okay? Diet cereal. Anybody remember special case cereal? All carbs, no protein, no benefit, but because they put diet, it tricked a lot of people. All right, naked bottled smoothies. The reason I don't like bottled smoothies as much as you making your own or eating fruit is it's like 30 to 40 grams of sugar and it's easy to just down where when you bite fruit you have to chew it up and it takes work and it takes effort and a lot of natural processes happen when we chew our food when it's liquid it's just down the gulch and boom you don't really get all those magical processes okay granola bars all carbs dried fruit all carbs again remember we said we want carbs fat and protein well, a lot of the things on here are just a one of the three. They're not all of them combined. Uh, canola oil is just fat. Pork rinds, orange juice is just straight sugar. Veg, veggie chips, just straight carbs. Quick oatmeal, um, you know, again, not to knock vegans or people who don't eat meat, but a lot of fake meat has a lot of sugar and other additives in it. Uh, agave, and then, of course, frozen yogurt. Um, 
Yvette, you got a question. Go for it. My question was about smoothies or protein shakes and powders like whey or, you know, other protein powders. Are those good as meal replacements or as supplement? I mean, to supplement whatever you're not getting in, you know, regular food if you're making it yourself? Yeah. I, mean. I, I do not think it's good for meal replacement because there's a whole bodily process that happens. So number one, if you have a plate of food, you smell it, your eyes see it, your body starts to create saliva. It starts anticipating the food. Then you cut it, you put it in your mouth. Now the saliva is breaking down the food and your teeth are chomping on it. Then you swallow it and it actually tells your body, you know, I'm beginning a meal and it starts to release hormones. And then in about 20 minutes, it'll release the fullness signal. It'll say I'm full. And so that is why if we scarf our food really quick, before that 20 minute signal begins, we can cram in a lot of calories before the full signal hits us. But if we take our time and we eat and we engage in conversation and we're, we're calm and we're not checking our phone and we're not distracted and then we take another bite, all these magical processes happen. So when you have a smoothie or weight, a shake, uh, you're bypassing all of that and you're going straight to drinking and you can get a lot of calories in. It also tends to be not filling for people. So I love them. I, I believe they're more of a snack than a meal replacement. I do think they should have protein powder added to it. And they should not be fruit and water only because again, it's not balanced. I'm only getting carbs. I'm not getting any fat and protein. And that happens when I put protein powder in it. Is there a protein powder that you, that's better than another that you recommend? Yes, I'll type it in the chat. It's called a scent protein. Which location are you at, Yvette? You're, oh, you're at Monrovia? Oh, they sell that at the gym. Yeah, you can go pick it up at the gym. Jamie, did you have a question? Uh, actually, Yvette already asked the question because I was going to ask the same about how to choose uh, protein powder because there's too many in the market. Uh, and I believe that some is good, but when, you, when I'm looking at the label in a, in a protein powder, what, other than the sugar content and what you're talking about, is there anything more specific for protein powder that we need to be looking at? No, honestly, that's it. It's protein <laughs> and, and sugar. And to be honest, there's not a lot of bad ones as long as you stick yeah. with whey. Um, I don't think we need more soy in our diet. I don't think you should get a soy protein, but uh, I, I do believe you should get a whey um, and get okay. a scent as the best brand. If somebody is vegan and listen to this, I'd go with Orgain. It's a vegan protein, but um, here's why, because most companies know when you're selling to a health market, that's going to be really critical reading their labels. They can't put junk and they can't put crappy ingredients because they know no one will buy it. And they're under the most scrutiny when you make a health product because they know health people read labels. So they're kind of held to a tight standard. And so almost all of them are good. There's very few proteins I come across that I read it and I'm like, oh, this is junk. You shouldn't take this. So um, you're, you're pretty good. But a scent, we just love it because it's really clean. It tastes good. It makes as well. I think it's more of a taste thing. People have bought protein at clumpy and it doesn't, doesn't they don't like the flavor. So I'd say it's more judge them on taste versus, uh, you know, ingredients. So, yeah. Okay. Thanks. So, all right. So guys, on this one, be a food detective, question everything. And the biggest thing I would say is a red flag as well, is if the packaging is trying to scream healthy at you. For example, Nature Valley granola bars. Let's look at what's in a Nature Valley granola <laughs> bar, okay? Um, it's 200 calories, six grams of fat, it is 30 grams of protein and, or sorry, 30 grams of carbs, four grams of protein. Guess what? Out of those 30 grams of carbs, 12 grams of it is sugar. This is a candy bar, guys. This is not a, a health bar. And let's be honest. Are you ever like really enjoying that bar? Are you really like um, that full from it? It doesn't really do a whole lot for you, right? So remember I said the most um, prominent is the first ingredient. Well, it's whole grain oats. And number two is sugar. So if we're trying to watch our blood sugar, like I was mentioning earlier, and it's the second ingredient, meaning the highest and pr prominent, but guess what else sugar's in it? Honey. And then we come down here and there's brown sugar uh, syrup. So there's three different sugar ingredients inside this Nature Valley Crunch Bar. So again, you guys know just from common sense what is nature, what is natural and what is healthy. 
if a marketer has to tell you it, I'm telling you it is not that healthy. And so if they have to put diet, healthy, high protein, nature, nature made, nature valley, these are all signs that it's not going to be good because you don't need to be convinced if it's healthy. You need to just see it, right? <laughs> all right, <clears throat> moving on. Tip number three, pass it on. Teach your kids how to read labels, guys. No one else is going to teach them that. And if you want to set them up for a lifelong success, this is something you do the rest of your life. You shop, you prep, you cook, you know, and, and you do it over and over again. So that's for you to do and take your time to do it. I know, again, we might be quick, like, oh, you know, let's just grab our stuff and let's get out of here. But uh, you got to stop and do it. And, and also what I think is really valuable is when they come up to you like, mom, can I get this? Dad, can I buy that? teach them your filters of why you would say yes or no. You know, obviously no one likes to hear that because I said so, you know, can I get this? No. Why? Cause I said, so we're just being lazy. Say I've taught my kids how much sugar is in it. And if it's anything over five, it's out of the question. If they're like, Hey, I want these fruit snacks. How many, how many sugars in it? 12. Nope. And, and then people have chuckled because my kids run up to me, dad, dad, can I have this? It only got four grams of sugar. And they're like, your kids read labels. And I'm like, Yes, it doesn't. It's not rocket science and kids enjoy it and they look at it as a game. Now they're running around the store and they're trying to find things and saying, do I like it? And will like, will dad approve it? And the big filter is for me, sugar, right? I'm saying how much sugar is in it because I know that's enemy number one. Um, so just again, pass that on um, and, and that way they can be empowered and then they'll be smart when they need to buy things on their own. Um, so right now, again, my kids are into this drink. You guys have probably heard about it. They kind of got some uh, negative rap right now. And that's Prime, uh, the big drink from Logan Paul. And so there's Prime Energy Drink and then there's Prime Hydration Drink. The energy drink, hell no, I'm not good to my kids. It's packed with caffeine. It's like, you know, two Red Bulls in one. And that's the one they're getting a bunch of scrutiny under because kids, when they see Prime, they don't know which one they should go get. They just hear Prime's awesome. And so they might be grabbing the energy drink. The hydration drink though, is like a better version of Gatorade because it's zero sugar. It's made with coconut water. And because they knew this, they brought it to me and they showed it to me. And I actually said, okay, good job, kids. We will get this and I'll get this for you occasionally. But it's because I gave them the filters of what dad's going to look for and you know, taught them those habits, right? So their nutrition habits are based on your decisions, but most importantly, your actions. We've probably heard the phrase, I don't, people don't look at what you say. They look at what you do and your kids are no different. And I know that to be true of mine. I could say whatever I want, but they're looking at, does dad follow through? Does he do what he says he wants us to do, right? Number four, if you guys are not on board with this, I highly urge you to, and that is use a delivery system or one of those pickup systems. I love Instacart. I've been using it for probably over half, uh, half a decade. Probably, yeah, it's been five, six years. They go shopping and they bring your groceries right to your doorstep. Um, and then I've seen, you know, Walmart, Target, various grocery stores, they allow park and pickup where they'll do all the shopping and go put it right in your back seat. So, um, you know, that is a, a great, great way because the thing that you're eliminating from your life is temptation. You know, when you're walking around your empty stomach and you're looking at things, you're like, man, that sounds good. Oh, why did I come in an empty stomach? And all these mystery things start filling up your cart. Well, guess what? When you tell them this is exactly what I need, that's exactly what shows up at your doorstep. And so I would urge you guys to get on board with this. I think Instacart, last time I checked, was somewhere between $100 to $150 for the year. And then uh, you could go and they have all the major grocery stores. And one of the cool hacks I like to share is that they actually add at Costco where they could shop at Costco for you and you don't need a Costco card because Instacart partnered with Costco. So usually you could shop there unless you had the cart. Well, you don't, if you have Instacart, they could go in there and shop and bring it to your doorstep. And who likes to go inside Costco anyway and deal with all those giant carts and loading up your car and lugging all that stuff. And they bring it to your front door, like hallelujah. So uh, please get on board with Instacart. Um, it is a game changer and it just cuts out one of the most pain in the necks around being healthy and fit, which is the shopping component. Yvette, I see you got a question. <laughs> Yes, I had a question about like delivery services, like for prepackaged meals, like Green Chef or things like that. What is your yes. take on that? And do they, is it something good to, you know, would they provide like good portions on things that would help with, I don't know, yes. eating right? Yeah, like there's a lot of meal prep. I think that's kind of what you're saying, like meal prep companies. And um, 
we used them for a while um i think for us it was just like the one we were with they were it was just like the same thing over and over so i think if you're very variety driven like make sure you find one that's got good variety um i know with us at our lead the way gyms um we actually partnered with light bite in glendora and upland and um they just kind of treat it like subway they have all their proteins and then they have all their carbs and they have all their veg and you just go down and just like okay give me the buffalo chicken with a rice and a broccoli okay on this one i'm actually gonna do the steak with a sweet potato and a cauliflower and you could just build your meals and then i think they do a discount when you do 10 plus meals which is basically what you need you need five lunches and five dinners so uh check out light bite uh and allison says they're amazing so that's good to hear so do they get like a discount partnering with you i mean through you guys or that's just a discount through they, whatever they it is um so you could discount stack so i'm giving you a little bit of a hack go in there and just use the code lead the way and then uh you get 10 percent off and if you do the 10 meals i think it's another 10 percent off and so you get 20 percent off and they do free delivery um uh seven days a week so that i thought is pretty you know significant so, Could you type the name of the place in the chat, please? Yep. Like, bite. Thank you. Okay. So, guys, I want to make this as simple as possible for you. This is my three-step nutrition program. Uh, I've been doing this for years. Every coach kind of has their own way of doing nutrition. I found this to be the most simple for the client. So I call it habit hacking, habit tracking, habit stacking, okay? So first... You want to start with habit hacking, which is a lot of the stuff I showed you. It's basically removing a lot of the processed foods, things with hidden sugars, things that are fake health foods, and just going more whole foods and just doing that three meals a day. You're not tracking calories. You're not tracking macros. You're just cleaning out your body. You're cleaning out your diet. You're cleaning up your shopping habits. And it's just an easy way to hack what you do every day. You wake up, you eat three meals, make them more whole foods, okay? Then if you want to take things a little bit to the next level, you do track. I don't think you got to track forever. I think you should just track your calories or macros for about a couple of weeks. And what that does is just raise your awareness of what your day looks like. Am I under my target? Am I over my target? Am I on track? You know, but that's where some tracking and awareness does come in. I, again, tracking forever is usually just not fun for most people, but it is a good thing to do maybe twice a year for two weeks to just see where you are. The third component is habit stacking. So now once your nutrition's dialed in, we want to put more habits on top of it and build like a pyramid that creates a person that is healthy, right? Like if we ask ourselves, let's take a healthy person, let's take an unhealthy person. Well, let's just look at both of their habits. How did this healthy person become healthy? Now this un unhealthy person become their way. Well, the unhealthy person has a habit of sitting a lot and watching a lot of TV and eating a lot of processed and convenience food. They're eating a lot of sugar. Well, the healthy person's walking a lot, they're eating a lot of protein and they're hanging out with other healthy friends and they're doing resistance training. So you got to ask yourself when you get to this stage, what is the next habit? Now that I got my nutrition dialed in, how many steps am I doing? I'm going to work on my steps. I want to get to 10,000 steps and make that my new habit. And now I'm doing that. Now I want to get to the gym, make sure I'm doing three to four strength workouts. And now I'm eating healthy and I'm walking and I'm doing strength workouts. All right, now I'm going to get my sleep dialed in. And so that's where the habit stacking is. You just keep stacking and stacking and stacking. And what happens is you get healthier and healthier and leaner and stronger. And so that is what the big snowball that you want to get to. But the first two are the ones that most people, if they just focus on that, they'll see the most change in their body. The final one is like little 10% improvements. These are like giant 50, 70% improvements in your body. So that is that. And again, I've uh, been in the game 20 years. So I've, I've worked with a lot of people, helped a lot of people transform, um, you know, got before and afters up the wazoo. Um, and so here, guys, this is one client that lost uh, in 10, 10 days, uh, she lost 15 pounds and she was eating a lot of processed food and all she cut out, it honestly wasn't a lot of fat. It was a lot of water weight. When you're eating a lot of processed foods, there's a lot of salt hidden in them and you're holding onto a lot of water weight. And just the first week, sometimes this big flush comes out. You lose five, three to five pounds just by dropping those processed foods, okay? And then here's two of our coaches that have even done this, right? So it's not just clients that are transforming, it's coaches too. We tracked it over the last 10 years. We've helped 5,000 people transform their body by 
work the workouts and the nutrition changes. So um, the big thing I want to point out when it comes to the workouts that you know definitely aids with this the, the shopping and nutrition tips I give you guys is we want to chase muscle. Muscle is good. And there's a couple of myths that exist out there. Number one is muscle weighs more than fat. That is just completely not true. Anything that weighs a pound weighs a pound. You could have a pound of feathers, uh, a one pound water bottle, a one pound dumbbell. If you have one pound of fat, it's a pound. If you have a pound of muscle, it's a pound. Nothing weighs more than the other. It's just they're all different densities and they all have different volume. And so fat is very much voluminous. It's like a pillow in your body. Well, rock or, or the muscle is like a rock. It's very dense and small. It does not have a lot of volume. They both weigh a pound. They both just have different um, volume to them. And then the second is fat turns to muscle or muscle turns to fat. It's two different cells. It's like saying my skin turned to hair or my hair turned to skin some here on the top of my head. Like they, they're just two completely different cells. They can't turn into one another. You're just getting rid of one and you're adding another, but they cannot transform into the other. So um, that's another myth I want to dispel. Yvette, question, fire away. Yes, uh, you mentioned, you know, there's sometimes an extreme amount of, amount of weight loss. Like you just mentioned, somebody lost 10 pounds in a week or whatever it was. And you yeah. see shows like The Biggest Loser. These people are just like losing weight. Fat. I mean, is that healthy? Uh, I mean, no. or does it, no. does it, does it, if you lose like, you know, an extreme amount of weight, let's say the first couple of weeks of, you know, being in the program and then it just, will it stop? Like it kind of, I mean, not stop, but it just, does it minimize? And, and it, is that the health, is that the way it's supposed to be, I guess? Yeah. In the beginning, it's called like, I call it baby gains. Like, um, you know, you're a baby in the gym, to be honest. Like if it's your first year, it's like being your first year alive, your first year in the gym, you will probably see the speediest muscle growth and the fastest fat loss. And then it gets harder the longer you're in the gym. And so uh, essentially what it comes down to is your body was ready, re really responsive because it was like ready to do these things. It was ready to lose the fat. It was ready to build the muscle. And then it takes a little bit more time and effort. Um, so yeah, it, it is not normal for it to stay at that pace. On The Biggest Loser, they're in crazy calorie deficits. Um, they're eating 2,000 calories and probably burning 10,000 calories a day. So they're in a negative 8,000 calorie deficit, super unhealthy. They have doctors that are away from their families, like definitely not going to be for your average Joe or Jane. Um, but here, here's something um, which my wife didn't mind me sharing this because I wanted a real life example. This is a body uh, in body scan. And so when she started, um, or, or let me just show you guys what's happening here after just two weeks of just, you know, just cutting out some processed food and, you know, doing a lot of the tips I share with you guys, um, and then doing resistance workouts three times a week. So her skeletal mass or muscle went up a pound and a half, and then her fat went down 3.7. Well, guess what? That does not show a massive net change on the scale. It shows 1.3. So how many people would be frustrated they're going to the gym for two or three weeks and they're like, man, this sucks. I'm only down a pound. But what's going on this under the skin is that you lost almost four and you almost put on two pounds of muscle. And so you don't know that until you get on the in body. The in body will tell you how much fat you lost, how many muscle you gained. And so sometimes the net change on the scale is not that drastic, but you're changing what's called your body composition. What is your body composed of? We want less fat composition and more muscle composition. That's what trainers and coaches want to help you guys, um, you know, achieve. And so um, we don't want, we don't want to get too caught up on the scale. It can be really disheartening. Um, and so as we wrap up here, guys, why do people fail on their health journey on their fat loss journey? Their environment sets them up to fail. I talked about that. Your work, your home, your social media. They have lack of support or accountability. They don't have enough people encouraging them and pushing them, telling them, you got this, let's go. That's what we want to provide at our gyms. That's what our coaches want to be to you guys. If you don't have that in your life, we will be it. Their calories are too high and their calories can be too low. That's a whole other talk. I'll have to do another talk separately on this. Lack of consistency. Um, and so they're just not sticking with it. They go hard for a week and then they go away for a week and then they come back for a week and they go away for a week. And then finally program hopping again, just, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try that. And things take time. I'd say do, when you're going to commit to a, a program, you got to at least give it 
four to six months. Like you got to go all in on it. Say, I'm going to go four to six months on this program. And then I'll go do four to six months on that program. But if you give it two to four weeks and then you go here two, four weeks, you're not allowing the results to occur. So what is the answer? Again, all these are fails that we can fix though. Um, and the answer is a coach because everybody on this call has a unique situation. There's so many intake questions. You guys might've heard me ask a lot of them. Well, how much do you weigh? How, what's your age? How active are you? Um, have you yo-yo dieted in the past? Um, are you doing resistance training? Like I probably need to ask 20 questions before I can give someone a fair answer. If a coach gives you an answer after you gave them just one, you know, kind of bit of information, they're probably not a good coach. A good coach answers with, it depends. And then they respond with a flurry of intake questions. And so if you feel stuck with your results, the answer is go talk to one of our coaches and say, I need to book an appointment with you. I need to sit down with you. I got a lot of questions and I want to get on a plan to get to my goals a lot quicker. All right. <laughs> Excuse me. All right. Well, it feels like we, we sprinkled in the Q and a there. Um, Yvette says the DEXA scan. Um, that's another one. There's plenty of them. We just have the embodies at our gym. They're all pretty much the same. One won't be more accurate than the other. Um, so guys, thank you for being patient. I know I went over on time. Um, I had a lot to talk over. I had a lot to share. Uh, giving those presentations. I feel like I always got 20 pounds of potatoes. I try to fit into a 10 pound bag, but we did it. We've got it done. And I will be sending the replay if you guys want to review this. So hopefully this was, you know, a good, you know, uh, lesson to you guys. And uh, if you enjoyed it, let me know. And we'll do some more presentations in the future. All right, guys. Appreciate Thanks, Dustin. This has been great. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank, Thank you guys. Glad to hear it. Bye-bye.